Now, finally today, imperial measurements in shops will be making a return in an announcement that has coincided with the Queen's Jubilee this week. Yes, since the year 2000, the EU's Weights and Measures Directive forced traders to use metric measurements in all goods other than a small arbitrary list, including beer, of course, sold in pints, and milk, but only when bought in returnable bottles. Yes, this convoluted directive allowed traders to display imperial measurements, but only as what are so-called supplementary measures. Illegal to be more prominent than metric ones. Selling a pound of apples alone or a pint of orange, ju orange juice without also displaying a larger sign saying in this instance 568.261 millimetres, well, that was banned. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but to some, it really matters. And I wonder if this is more than the relatively minor issue of making life a little easier for some small traders. Does this regulatory change indicate a more fundamental shift in how we manage and indeed regulate our economy? Well, joining me now is Andrew Lillico, Executive Director of Europe Economics. Welcome to the programme, Andrew. I, su I suppose, first of all, uh, reading through all the different peculiar rules that go along with this 2000 directive, the exemptions um, and, and the allowances and sort of this can be allowed, but it has to be bigger or smaller than this, and this can be allowed, but only if you return it afterwards. Uh, it's bizarre. Uh, surely it's a good thing we're getting rid of this. Well, it's not really required for us anymore. I suppose one of the things with some of those in uh, the use of metric measures was to enhance the comparability uh, across different parts of the single market. Uh, so it might have had a rationale in the context of single market um, traded uh, products. But since we've now left the European Union, it's not so relevant to us. Uh, it's not a big thing. There aren't going to be that many people who want to use imperial units for things. Um, it might be that it grows a bit compared with what it was in the past because, of course, imperial measures evolved over centuries to reflect what people found to be convenient in the process of trading. Now, it might be that modern um, you know, supply chains and so on mean that the reasons why those turned out to be the convenient units in the past um, uh, don't apply anymore, but it might be that there's something more fundamental like you know, how many apples that people tend to want to have or how long you buy apples before they go off or something. So it might be that the use of them increases a bit. But it's, I, I doubt it's going to be a big thing. Um, a more important point, I think, is that it illustrates this issue that certain kinds of things which we did, which had a relevance when we were members of the uh, European Union, aren't going to be relevant anymore. And so we're going to get rid of some of those. Yes, and I suppose there are many, many different regulations that can be got rid of. However, the, the more you go through this big bundle of EU red tape, the more politically difficult it becomes. Is it your sense that this is a government that's willing to have the fight to reform some of the more significant EU regulations? No, I wouldn't say that it was. I also think that it's worth bearing in mind that the EU probably prevented UK governments from introducing almost as many stupid uh, regulations as it forced them to introduce. Uh, so I think it's uh, the, the thing about leaving the European Union is that you then get to choose what you do. And some of your governments are going to be more regulating and some of your governments are going to be less regulating. Uh, I don't think that this is a particularly pro deregulation government, uh, but, but um, hopefully we'll get more deregulatory governments in the future. Um, uh, so I I just see it as being a longer term dynamic. I think over time what will happen is not so much that we'll have less regulation, but that the regulation will be more relevant to us. And so measures such as a requirement for metric, uh, metric uh, display, which allows you to trade with other people who also have metric display, those kinds of things won't be so relevant to us. And in future, we'll have some blend of policies, some of which are going to be good and some of which are going to be bad. But in general, they'll be more relevant to us. Now, I suppose something that flows on from that longer term vision is something that I saw you tweet about uh, just yesterday, I believe. I believe we've got a picture of this tweet, which we can show those watching on television now, which was Tory MPs. If you haven't demanded Boris and Sunak, tell us what inflation rate they want and how they intend to get inflation down to that level. I'm not interested in your opinions about whether the PM should resign over a cake. Um, Speaking about that, do, do you think this government has a plan to get inflation down or not? 
I don't think they have any policy with respect to inflation at all. They haven't even told us what inflation rate they want to have for this year and next. Notionally, you have a 2% inflation target. Nobody actually believes that it would be a good idea for the Bank of England to try to get the inflation to 2% this year. Notionally, we have a 2% inflation target for next year. I mean, what is it? They, they won't even, if they won't even tell us what inflation rate they want, let alone have any view of how it should come down, at the time when it's instead what they do, uh, instead of having an actual response to inflation, what they're trying to do is to mitigate some of the impacts of inflation on uh, households through measures, through various kinds of giveaways, uh, such as the uh, energy package the other day. Uh, this this isn't conservatism. I mean, in the first instance, what you want, if you have high inflation, you need to have a policy for getting inflation down. Or at the very least, you need to tell us what inflation rate you want. And the government believes that by um, pretending that it's all something to do with the Bank of England and inflation has nothing to do with us or with some international markets, or even they go on about these windfall taxes and they're going about, they want to sort of think it's rapacious capitalists um, uh, overpricing everything. And it, inflation all has to be somebody else's fault because they don't want to bear the political cost uh, of the anger that will come as people feel the uh, feel the consequences of, uh, of that for their cost mm. of living. And uh, but that's yeah. not good enough. Governments need to take that on the chin and tell us what they're going to do about it. And this government doesn't want to do that. That's just not how they are. And it's not well, really a surprise given that Rishi Sunak was appointed to be a kind of yes man uh, by Dominic Cummings. It's not a surprise that he doesn't really have a policy on these things. And I think that's really quite disappointing at this stage. It's a worrying situation and one we should probably pay more attention to than cake or wine or cheese. But uh, Andrew Lillico, thank you so much for talking us through those issues there. Really appreciate your time. That's it.